Today, I'm gonna to teach you guys how to create this 3D spinning chrome logo effect. My name is Devin Wynn, welcome to 11% Tutorials. This 3D spinning logo effect is just a great way to spice up your website, YouTube channel, clothing brand, etc. There's so many applications for it and also it's really, really easy to recreate. Today we'll be using three applications, After Effects, Photoshop, and Element 3D. If you have the Adobe Suite, perfect. But before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe. It's free, all this content is free, so it'd mean the world to me. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the video. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into Photoshop right right here and I want you to pull up your logo right here so I just have my 11% logo and make sure it's transparent now while having the SVG logo would be helpful mine's right here is just a really high quality uh, pixelated image I think it's like 3,000 pixels if you zoom in you can see them it won't really make a super big difference but um, it'd be preferred SVG pixel JPEGs PNGs work as well but once you have your logo in right here you're going to right click this layer right here and you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit new 3d extrusion from this layer Layer, hit OK, uh, yes, and convert it to a 3D workspace. Now you're going to see it's converted your logo into a 3D object and it's really fat, I guess, in depth. So we're just going to decrease this uh, depth extrusion to about 100, 150, 100 works. Once your logo is set and you like the depth, you can come back here to your layers panel, right click it, and then hit uh, export 3D layer. You're going to change the DAE to a OBJ file and then hit OK, and then you're just going to name your obj file i'm just going to call this ep logo once it exports now you should be able to find it right here and it should be a obj uh, file that you can you know adjust and change and you can see right here what i was talking about this is what will happen if you do have a pixelated image it will create these like uh bumps on your edges if you don't want that then you will have to use an svg file but just for the effect that i'm going for it's such a minor detail it doesn't really matter and now once you have that ready you can go ahead and hop into after effects we're going to open up a new after effects composition just make sure your composition settings are quite wide it honestly doesn't matter if it's like a 16 by 9 aspect ratio or anything like that i just have a really wide 2000 by 800 uh pixel dimensions and then the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a new layer solid this solid color could be anything any color you want and name it uh, logo Hit okay and boom now we have a black solid right here what we're gonna do is this is the part that requires you to have element 3d you're gonna search up element 3d right here and we're going to drag element 3d to this solid layer now that solid layer is going to disappear and then what we're gonna do is you're gonna see it opens up this new little element tab and you have this option to click scene setup. Now we're gonna load into element 3D scene setup right here. And yeah, real quick, if you don't have Element 3D, I really recommend you do getting it. Um, of course, there are ways that you can get it without having to pay, but, um, but you know, do pirate it at your own risk. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna hit import, and then we're gonna search for the logo that you created. So I'm gonna search for EP logo uh, 3D, this four one right here that we created, hit import, and then hit okay. And boom, now you're gonna see our logo is massive. We're just gonna go ahead and scale it down by dragging down on the scale right here. If you don't know how to operate element 3d or not familiar with 3d modeling softwares it's very simple these little arrows right here adjust the direction x y z and then over here you have all these transform items where you can just adjust skill position rotation anchor points everything like that it's pretty much just like basic premiere pro or after effects but 3d now i'm gonna hit okay right here and you're gonna see boom it appears right here in our main composition there are some things it's, it is a bit small so we're gonna go ahead and scale that back up in scene setup but real quick before we go back in we're going to pull up a background file so right here i have this picture of a studio and you're literally just going to drag it into your composition and turn off the visibility. I will link down to this picture below or you can just literally search up studio image and what this image is going to serve as is the environment background uh, reflection for this chrome silver effect that we're going for. So I want you to click on back onto your logo layer and then we're going to hit the drop down on custom layers and then hit the drop down on custom texture maps. On layer one, change none to studio background JPEG. And you're gonna see nothing happened. <laughs> we're gonna come back here to our scene setup. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to click on to our logo right here and we're gonna hit the drop down. 
Uh, depending on your logo, all right, here, it's kind of weird because Photoshop exported this oddly, but we have like three different material types. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna start with one at a time. So you can check to see which materials are affecting which parts. So obviously this top layer right here is just affecting the front layer of our 3D text. And then I'm assuming the rest are the other types. This middle one right here is the extrusion depth and the bottom one is the back image over here. And then I'm gonna come all the way down over here to the edit panel and change my environment setting. I'm gonna click none and then hit the drop down over here. And now I can set studio background JPEG two. Hit OK and you see that it already created some difference. It's obviously reflecting and we can go ahead and adjust some settings to make it a little bit more chrome and glossy looking. We're going to come over here to this reflectivity icon and we're going to change the intensity up to 100. Then we're going to click over here on this material basic settings icon and we're going to change the glossiness up to about, let's do 70. And boom, there we go. We have a nice chrome effect already. Now, this chrome effect is only applied to the front layer, not the back or the sides. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to right click this and then we're going to hit copy material and then come all the way over here just to any of these other three ones, right click them and then paste material and then uh, this bottom one right here, right click it and then paste material and boom, just like that we have an entire chrome logo right here. This honestly looks pretty dope. Oh, one last thing. I'm going to scale this up just because uh, I knew I wanted to do that when I checked the composition. So I'm going to scale it up to 163 and boom, there we go. The basic 3D Chrome logo effect. But the only problem is it's a still. There's no animation. So let's go ahead and add some animation. Now, what's cool about this is that you don't even have to hop into Element 3D Scene Setup. You can just hit the drop down on Group 1 and then hit the drop down on Particle Replicator and then just hit the rotation drop down. A lot of drop downs there. The spinning effect that we're going to be going for is going to be the Y rotation. And you see if we adjust that, we have a nice spinning effect. And now you can see the full depth of this chrome. Like everything is just reflecting. It's honestly just perfect. The effect is really clean, really nice looking. Um, so let's go ahead and add some keyframes to it. So we're going to set the first keyframe to zero and we're just going to hit the keyframe icon. And then I'm going to drag all the way down to the end of my composition and then set this to 360. Now my composition is about like seven seconds long. So when I go ahead and play that out, we have a nice spinning 360 effect and all these chrome effects are just playing out perfectly. Everything honestly looks really great. Real quick, I'm going to add a new solid layer, hit layer new solid, and then I'm just gonna make this a black solid and apply this to the very bottom. And now we have a black background going on right here. It's just a really, really nice finish to the effect. And just like that, that's pretty much the effect, but we are not done yet, of course, because I hear at 11%, it's all about the details that matter the most. So there's some ways that you can spice this up just to make it look even more dreamy and just special and unique. And those are gonna be glow and noise effects. So I'm going to come over here to my effects and presets and I'm going to search glow. Now there is a standard After Effects glow right here and then uh, there's a sapphire glow. I'm going to use a sapphire glow just because I prefer it. It's really good. If you don't have sapphire as well, you should really look into getting it. It's a really extremely helpful plugin. And boom, just like that, um, we have a nice glow to our effect already. I honestly don't even have to adjust many of the settings. It honestly looks pretty great off the bat. And then lastly, I'm going to add some film noise so there's a film sapphire effect as well you can use noise on after effects just search up noise and it should be there but this uh film effect is really really cool i like it a lot i'm going to change this to about a kodak 5274 let's try that and when we play that out you see it's added some noise and a little bit of color grading it just takes this effect to a whole another level there's like some little mid-tones of blue going on right here and we have the glow it just looks a lot nicer. Here is the final effect. If you guys made it to the end of the video, really, thank you so much for watching. If you're able to find anything in this video helpful or useful, please, really, if you can, smash the like button and hit subscribe. I love making these videos and putting them out for you for free, so it, it really means so much to me. If you have any questions or suggestions for content you'd like to see from us in the future, please be sure to leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. Remember to follow us on Instagram at 11%prod. We love to see what you guys create. Once again, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.